Hi everyone, I'm here with Ari Boswell. I'm sure I'm pronouncing it uh, totally wrong, so how uh, is the right pronunciation? It, it, it's absolutely fine. Yeah. Okay, thank you so much. And we are talking about a lot of different topics, uh, so let's start with the first one. You are working on Lead Bitcoin. Um, can you explain what it is, uh, how does it work, and if it's an alternative to Bitcoin Core? Its objective is not really to be an alternative to Bitcoin Core. Bitcoin Core is an application, um, yeah, whereas uh, LibBitcoin is a library. That's what a Lib and LibBitcoin means. So it's a development toolkit. Um, it's been around, it was really the first uh, full implementation of Bitcoin after Bitcoin Core, uh, started in 2011. And uh, it's 10 different development libraries that provide tools for people to make real Bitcoin stuff. If you don't know anything about it, this is the time you want to check everything about a little Bitcoin. So, uh, your crypto economics uh, posts are very interesting too. A uh, link uh, is in the description. And they are famous for your controversial positions. Um, for example, is it correct to say that you don't believe in the dichotomy between miners and users that many devs are co currently endorsing? That, that's correct. I, you know, I, I don't feel that they're controversial positions. To me, they're fairly <laughs> obvious things. And when I talk to people about them, um, you know, face to face, you have discussions. People don't really see them as very controversial, but they're very different from what people are used to. Mm -hmm. um, and so that can make them seem controversial, I guess. Uh, I, I don't. One of the first things I wrote about was uh, it was I was kind of getting frustrated with the um, dialogue around what I call the fork wars. Right? This, mm -hmm conflict between, what appeared to be a conflict between miners and users. Um, I don't really use the term users, it's ambiguous, so I refer to merchants. Merchants um, submit transactions to be confirmed uh, by miners, and miners provide that confirmation as a service. So um, it, they're not in conflict with each other, they're in a market together, right? You buy your coffee at the coffee shop, you're not in conflict with the coffee shop. They, you're both getting what you want, and you're both, uh, you know, it's a positive sell economy. So miners and merchants work together to secure the money. Um, neither of them is the other's enemy, so that the system isn't designed to prevent them from attacking each other. It's designed to prevent the state from attacking the market. And the idea that's kind of put forth by a lot of people in the community, because of you know, recent events, um, uh, has led people to believe that the security model is based on preventing miners from doing stuff that they want to do, and it's not. I mean, the system is designed to allow people to do whatever they want to, just to pre preserve the system if they want to. <laughs> oh, another take from uh, crypto economics uh, that I really like. You think that it is inevitable or even preferable uh, some sort of repression from the governments because they could uh, in some way incentivize the anonymity of miners and resilience of the system. Could you explain me better? Yeah, the, the, the design of Bitcoin presupposes attacks on the system. That's, that's why we have anonymity in both the validation side of things and the, and the confirmation, mining side of things, um, so people can operate in, in secret. Uh, it's also why we use the term decentralization all the time. The, the point of decentralization is not as a feature, it's as a tool to, to allow people to operate in secret. So the presumption of the, of the whole design is that uh, like BitTorrent, which it references in Satoshi's white paper, is that it can it can allow people to share the risk of running the system when it's not legal. So um, if that doesn't happen, it's fine. You don't really need Bitcoin if, if, if it's never under attack by the state. But yes. history has shown that the state likes to have control over money. It's very profitable. And Bitcoin exists as an attempt to um, take control of money back from the state. So it does assume it'll be, as you say, oppressed. So, in a different way from other Bitcoin devs, uh, they spend their lives uh, mostly behind their computers. Your life is extremely adventure, from martial arts to flights to navy. Is there a common thread? Common thread? Um, <laughs> yeah, I, I do what I like. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's the common thread. I, I, uh, I, have, I have a limited amount of time I can spend doing one thing I like because there's a lot of things I like to do. So, after. Uh, Ten years in the Navy, I'd done everything I wanted to do, and I just decided to drop it all, not, not fly anymore, not be military, not, not even go contract with the military, which I had an option to do. I just said, I'm out, I'm going to go start a software company. 
Um, I did that, um, you know, for quite a while. I've done a few. Uh, so I like entrepreneurship, but there's other things I like to do. Which I'm, you know, Bitcoin is a little different than that whole period of my life where I was, uh, you know, an entrepreneur. So, what do you see for your future? <laughs> right now, it's a lot of travel, a lot of open source development, and uh, a lot of uh, meeting new and interesting people. Um, so, kids are getting uh, ready to leave the nest. <laughs> so that's another phase coming up too. Yeah. So we'll see what happens. <laughs> Yesterday at the Milan Bitcoin Meetup, link in the description if you want to take a look, you talked about different phases for Bitcoin, on a moon, black market, competitive phase and the surrender phase. Uh, what's your forecast for 2018 and the next years? What phases are we going to see soon? I think we'll, we'll be in this honeymoon phase for quite some time. Mm. Yeah, Good news. Bitcoin. <laughs> It's, you know, it's, to me, it's almost, uh, it's not necessarily good that you stay there. You, the system has to evolve at some point to, um, to mature or get to the next level. Um, as long as we're in the honeymoon phase, it implies that people are basically using state money. And, and so Bitcoin is there, but it's not having the impact we want. So to get to that impact on people's lives, uh, you know, monetary sovereignty or however you want to describe it, um, you really have to pass through the next phase, which is in the black market phase, it implies that it's having an impact, right? And, and, and yes. so, yeah, it may be good that we're, we're, we're not having to um, fight that battle right now. We spend more time building tools and making things stronger. But at some point, um, without the threat, things just don't get stronger. We, we get centralized web, web wallets and exchanges and big miners and those things that are not really um, themselves going to withstand the next phase. So, are there any technology or tools that you're excited about? Too? Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm excited about what I do. Um, of course, that's why I do it. Uh, but there's other, you know, and that's really just providing better tooling for people to build things. When I, when I say real Bitcoin, what I mean is instead of, say, using a, a web API to build an application that is dependent on that central API, which will not withstand the second phase, people can build applications that can be run locally, run, you know, depend on local node, um, uh, operate on small, small scale in a dist distributed way that can withstand that, um, that phase. So I'm excited about that because the tools need to get a lot better. Um, and one of the reasons people build on centralized services is basically because the tooling's easier. It's easier to work with, easier to get stuff done. Um, but I'm also excited about the privacy stuff because I think that's um, really the biggest issue. One of the biggest issues that, that Bitcoin has is that without privacy, um, you can't withstand that. It's another aspect of not being able to withstand the black market phase, right? You're constantly being de-anonymized. Um, it's much harder to operate in secret, implicitly. Um, so, I mean, some people might say, well, you know, why would you want people to operate illicitly? But again, that's the whole point of the money. And you shouldn't necessarily think of it in the context of maybe your nation state. Um, you know, there's, there's some nation states that you know, most people would be fine with, you know, their people um, having a little bit more freedom. I mean, North Korea, for example. So, um, I tend to keep that in, in, in perspective. Um, you want people to be able to operate privately. So, Andrew's work, um, uh, for example, that, that we heard about yesterday, is tremendous and there's other people doing that kind of work and you know so decentralization better tooling better privacy uh, those are the things that are most important to me right now thank you very much for being in land and to answer to all these questions and uh, please take a look up at uh, crypto economics and also if you want to contribute to a bitcoin uh, consider it it's very important but thank you again thank you